Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are doing great. Uh, we're going to continue with Acts chapter two, um, and you know, just to realize that what it's talking about, needing the Holy Spirit, the the promise that God has given us is so needed right now, right? Um, globally, there's a, there's need in the world. Uh, there's a need for God in the world. There's a need in our nation. Uh, there is so much unrest, division, uh, hate that's being communicated and practiced. And, um, and the only way that we as believers can really live the life we're supposed to live and be testimony and witnesses of what we are, of what we are supposed to, of Jesus Christ, is through the Holy Spirit. That's the only way. And right now the world needs, America needs, our communities and our cities need true believers living in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Because whenever we don't, that's when we get Christians out there doing and saying things that don't re represent who Jesus Christ really is, because it's not being done in the Spirit of God. So what we're talking about here is essential. This is essential. We need the Spirit of God. We need to be filled and baptized with the Spirit of God. So let's look at Luke. I mean, I'm sorry. Let's look at Acts chapter 2. Um, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in, in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, I'm going to unpack this on Sunday morning and give what are the, what, what are the six gifts of Pentecost. But I don't want to give it all today, and we're going to continue on next week uh, with this as well. But uh, so I encourage you to check us out and, and listen, uh, especially if you're here in the Syracuse area, you can come visit in person um, and hear the message and join us in worship. But first we see here that uh, this is happening on the day of Pentecost. So the day of Pentecost was 50 days after the Passover. The Passover was when Jesus died and that weekend he, he was crucified and then he rose again. 50 days later, is the Feast of Pentecost. It's, a, it's one of the festivals. It's, a, it's, it's the second major feast in the Jewish calendar. And it represented the harvest, uh, that it was, it was the first fruits of the harvest. The harvest was beginning. And the reason this is so in, in, important and what it's emphasizing for us or highlighting, underscoring, is that Jesus is letting us know, and God the Father is letting us know, that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the harvest go together. Right? The reason he is giving us the Holy Spirit and baptizing us, filling us with his Holy Spirit to be witnesses for the harvest. When Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Uh, here where he says, again, it, it's happening on the harvest and, and he's sending them out. So just to, to that, that to me communicates that it is God's intention to see a harvest, to, to harvest people for himself, to, to bring them into relationship with him. So I have to look at what I'm doing and saying, okay, well, what am I doing individually, Tony Jones, to bring in the harvest for the Lord? He's, he's given me his Holy Spirit for this purpose. He's given me the gift of the Holy Spirit to be able to bring people into the kingdom of God. So what am I doing? Am I harvesting with him? Am I working in the field with him? What, what am I doing as a church? Is my church that I'm leading, that I participate in, are we seeing a harvest? Are, are we actively seeking the harvest? And, and even if it's hard, you might say, well, it's hard. It's not, people don't want to listen. They don't want to hear. They're not open. Well, you know, in Ezekiel, God sent Ezekiel to preach. And he says, and I'm sending you to a hard-headed people. And they speak your own language, but they're hard-headed, they're stubborn. And even if they don't listen to you, you preach what I tell you so that they will know that there was a prophet among them. Either way, right, our job is, is to go and share. Um, and what we see is that, that that's, it's important. It's what God wants. And I believe that the harvest is, we should be expecting, we should be expecting people to respond. In the book of Acts, as we look at it, I want you to notice every time we're looking at the gospel being preached, what the response is. Because the very first response is positive. People that are hearing the gospel for the first time are not normally getting upset about it. It's normally later on that people get upset. The first response is normally 
positive. People say, I, I want that. So if we're not getting that response from people, then are we communicating? Are we witnessing correctly? Um, so that's going to be part of the challenge as we look at chapter two here. So let's just go on. I want to give you some more of the, of the context. It's so interesting. So suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came. So that the sound doesn't just say they felt a wind, but a sound of a, of, of a rushing wind. So there might have been an actual wind. Now the word wind in Greek and in the, New, in the Old Testament means pneuma, means spirit. Same word for spirit. So the wind of God, or the breath of God, right? The breath of God is the same word. So the sound like a blowing in a violent wind from heaven filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire and that separated it came to rest on each of them and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. So let's talk about this for a moment. One of the things about Pentecost is that it represents the first fruits, the harvest. The second thing is that Pentecost may also be the anniversary of when Moses goes up on the mountain. Because remember, they celebrate the Passover when they leave Egypt. Uh, and they celebrate the Passover. That was the first one they celebrated. And, and that was in the first month. And then it says in the third month, uh, which would have been then about anywhere between 50 to, to 60 or uh, to 90 days later, um, they're in, uh, they, they, they arrive at the, um, at Mount Sinai. And I want you, I want to read from Exodus chapter 29 when they get there and listen to what is being said. Um, Exodus 19 verse 16, on the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning. Now the word thunder here also can be translated ver voices or, or voices, but in this case, thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountains. And a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it like fire. The smoke billowed up like smoke from a furnace. And the whole mountain trembled violently. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. And then he gets the Ten Commandments in chapter 20, and in chapter 20, verse 18. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear, and they saw at a distance, and Moses said, Speak to, speak to us yourselves, and we will listen, but do not give, do not have God speak to us, or we will die. All right. So in this con in Exodus, what's happening? Even if it's not the exact day, it's it's very close. And I believe that there is a a a um an intended parallel between the, the moment of M Moses and Mount Sinai in Exodus nineteen and twenty, and what's happening here in Pentecost in chapter two. Because in each one, you have the thundering, um, lightning thunder, the trumpet being sounded, which, and, and the voice of God speaking. And they're saying, we, let God speak. Right? You'll be our voice. And it keeps saying that, that, that word. Um, rabbis it, 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 from, from, from like the second century talking about, in what they call the Midrash, Exodus refers to the thundering as the voice of God. And, and one of them even said that it's like the, the, the one voice came and then became many voices. Um, and he says a lot more of that, but I'm just kind of paraphrasing it real quickly. But in chapter two here again, so, so the, and then the smoke, the glory, the fire and the smoke of the presence of God covers the mountain. Well, and, and, and Moses was the only one at that moment that was able to experience that. And the result was that God gave them at that time the law, the Ten Commandments. And he begins to give to Moses the law. Well, here we have in Acts chapter 2, the sound, right? Um, blowing of a violent wind came, filled the whole house where they were sitting. Uh, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire tongues fire and the tongues here we translated tongues but it basically it, it, it can be also translated languages which is what it is so different languages different different tongues looking like fire in some way they see this and they and it gets distributed it gets divided up among each of them they each have it resting upon them it, it rests on them it comes upon them and they are filled 
with the Holy Spirit. So you're having this fire, you're having the, the sound, and you're having the Holy Spirit descend on each of them. Where in the Old Testament, they received the law. Now here in the New Testament, they are receiving the presence. Everyone, not just Moses, but everyone, because it says all of them were filled. Not just the, the, the 11 or the 12 that were still in the room, but the ladies that were in the room. Uh, Stephen, if he was there, Philip, if he was there, uh, Barnabas, if he was there, all of them that were in the room were filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's not just for the one. It's not just for Moses. It's not just for the pastor. It's, it's for everyone. Um, and it's at this moment they receive the Holy Spirit. So that's the big thing they got, the Holy Spirit, right? The, the Holy Spirit is not, it's referred to as a gift, but it's a person. It's God himself dwelling within us. Um, and, and, and here's a, a crazy thought as well. You know, Jesus, Jesus, um, came to earth for 33 years. Um, the Holy Spirit has been here for over 2000 plus, right? Jesus Christ came for three years, 33 years. And at the end of that, he ascended back up into heaven. But here the Holy Spirit is released on the church, on those who believe in him. They're born again, and the Holy Spirit has remained in the church, filling the Lord's people, guiding and leading them for the last 2,000 years. And that is his purpose, again, for the harvest, to, to regenerate us uh, and lead us into the effectiveness of serving our, our Savior, our God, and letting others know that what they can have if they believe. Uh, so there's so much more. There's the gift of tongues and um, and explaining that, but I'll probably just get into that next week uh, or yeah, next time. So I uh, don't go too long today. So this is interesting. It's fascinating. Let's let's you know. I hope you, I hope you guys are encouraged and excited. And let's be praying continually for our churches, our families, uh, for protection, for healing, and for healing in our nation. And let's be part of that in prayer on our knees, but also going out and being salt and light in our community. And letting people know that there is a difference. There is a difference between people who follow the Lord, no matter what the color of their skin is. So Lord bless you. I'll see you next time. God bless.